Stapes moves back and forth here. Inside this structure, this is our bony, what's called the bony labyrinth, and we have our semicircular canals here. So this is going to be, if we're oriented here, this is going to be the lateral canal here, semicircular canal. This is going to be the posterior semicircular canal, and this one will be the anterior semicircular canal. Okay. So if this is your head, your eyeballs here, so this is anterior this way, so this one will be anterior, this one will be posterior, and this one's lateral. Okay, so again, that gives you the dynamic equilibrium. As those move. The part we're concerned about with the transduction of sound waves into an action potential is here at the cochlea. Okay. So if we, when this stapes vibrates back and forth, it's going to set up a fluid wave inside the cochlea. And the fluid inside the cochlea is, there are two types of fluid. So here's a cross, here's a cross section of the cochlea. And orientation doesn't really matter so much. But these two large chambers here are going to be filled with what's referred to as perilymph. Lymph is just a clear fluid, it's a blood filtrate. And inside this smaller tube is endolymph. So it's just designated whether what part of the membranous structure it's on. Now, I've got to give names to these two chambers here. So what we're looking for to help us remember names is this large diagonal membrane here. This is called the vestibular membrane. And so it is associated with this duct. And so we're going to call that the vestibular duct or the scala vestibuli. The other large duct here underneath it is the scala tympani okay, or tympanic duct. Yep. All right. So the membrane that is kind of separating out this cochlear duct here is the vestibular membrane here and then this membrane that it sits on here which is the basilar membrane under here. So basilar membrane there, vestibular membrane here, that defines our cochlear duct here. Within the cochlear duct, we're looking at the actual place where we actually produce action potentials to get us perception of sound. And what we're looking at here is this area which is called the organ of corti. And it's going to contain our hair cells, which are here. You can see the little tiny hairs on them here. And it has the tectorial membrane here. And there are inner hair cells and there are outer hair cells. But the idea is that as sound is transmitted through the malleus incus stapes to the fluid, this is going to bend, this is going to bend, and when that bends, you can actually see those hair cells are bending. When the hair cells bend, that's going to generate an action potential. It's going to travel out through this branch. Here are all our sensory cell body neurons for that. This is the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve that's going to come out. And remember, this tube is long and it's coiled up. And so depending on where this membrane bends those hair cells, it's going to send an axe potential down a different axon in the cochlear branch. It's going to go to a different spot on your auditory cortex and it's going to allow you to perceive a different sound with that. This, yeah, if we kind of, we kind of outline it here with bracket. This area here is the organ of corti. Okay. So it consists of the basilar membrane there, the hair cells here, inner and outer, and the tectorial membrane here. Okay. So vestibular duct, tympanic duct, cochlear duct with the organ of corti, tectorial membrane here. That wiggles the hair cells. They create an action potential which goes out the cochlear nerve and gives you perception of sound. So for example, if you give us name this.